In our first video on rational equations, we looked at how we could multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator in order to reduce out the fractions. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we might have to factor the denominators in order to find that least common denominator. Let's take a look at some examples. I think we're on example number three now, so let's take a look at x over x minus 8 minus 2 over x minus 4 equals negative 3x plus 56 over x squared minus 12x plus 32. And what I want to notice here is that that last denominator can be factored. And we're going to do exactly that. We're going to factor it so we get an idea of what elements are making up all of our denominators. x squared is x times x. And 32 is 8 times 4. And if they're both negative, that gives me the 12x in the middle. By the way, to help with your factoring, if you look at the other denominators, that might give you a hint on what to look for for your factors. All right, now that we know what makes up the denominators of this fraction, remember we also have to find the excluded values, the extraneous possible bad values. We see an x minus 8, so x minus 8 cannot be equal to 0. And if I add 8 to both sides, we find out that x cannot be equal to 8. Similarly with the x minus 4, x minus 4 cannot be 0. We can't have 0 in the denominator. So when I add 4 to both sides, I find out that x cannot be equal to 4 either. Now technically, we have to look at the other fraction as well, but we've already looked at x minus 8, and we've already looked at x minus 4, so we don't have to do them again. We're ready to go to the solving with that least common denominator. I see there's a factor of x minus 8. There's a factor of x minus 4. And then they're repeated in the last fraction. But because they're repeated, we don't have to include them a second time. So we're going to multiply each denominator by x minus 8 times x minus 4 by x minus 8, x minus 4, and by x minus 8, x minus 4. And we're going to go ahead and put that last numerator in parentheses just in case I have to do any multiplying out of all the terms. So now we go back through and we see what can reduce. On the first fraction, the x minus 8 reduces out. On the second fraction, the x minus 4 reduces out. On the last fraction, the x minus 8 and the x minus 4 reduce out. So when we take a look at what's left, we can distribute the x through, and we get x squared minus 4x. Keep this minus with the 2. Be careful. That's a negative 2 distributing through. Negative 2x and a negative times a negative makes it a positive 16 equals only the numerator left on the other side, negative 3x plus 56. And now we can start solving. We know if there's an x squared, it needs to be equal to 0. So we'll add 3x to both sides. We'll also subtract 56 from both sides so that it equals 0. And then we have x squared minus 3x minus 40 equals 0. We can solve this by factoring x squared is x times x, 40 is 5 times 8. And if the 8 is negative and the 5 is positive, it gives us that negative 3 in the middle. So x plus 5 equals 0, and x minus 8 equals 0. Subtract 5 from both sides, x is equal to negative 5. Add 8 to both sides, and x is also equal to 8. But we always want to take a moment to double check our values that are not allowed. x is not allowed to be 8, and it's not allowed to be 4. Notice we got 8 for one of our solutions. That's considered an extraneous root. It needs to be dumped out. So only the negative 5 is our actual solution. Let's try one last problem to make sure we've got a really good grasp on this concept. Question number 4. We're going to do x over x minus 2 plus 2 over x minus 4 equals 4x minus 12 over x squared minus 6x plus 8. Again, we're going to start by factoring that denominator. x squared is x times x. 8 is 4 times 2. And if they're both negative, gives us the negative 6 in the middle. Looking for the unallowed values, x minus 2 cannot be equal to 0. So if I add 2 to both sides, x cannot be 2. The second one, x minus 4, also cannot be equal to 0. So if I add 4 to both sides, x cannot be equal to 4. And in orange over here on the right, those are both repeated, so we don't have to do them again. We know the bad values are 2 and 4, 
Let's see what happens when we solve looking for that least common denominator. In the denominators, I see factors of x minus 2 and x minus 4. Again, there's no need to repeat them. We're going to multiply each term by x minus 2 times x minus 4, x minus 2 times x minus 4, and x minus 2 times x minus 4, putting that binomial in parentheses just in case I need to do any multiplying out. Reducing, we'll divide out the x minus 2's. We'll divide out the x minus 4's. And on the second fraction, they both divide out, leaving me behind when I distribute the x through x squared minus 4x plus distribute the 2 through 2x minus 4 equals the 4x minus 12 that's left. Again, if there's an x squared, we want it to equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So now it equals 0. We have x squared. And when we combine like terms, that's minus 6x and a positive 8. Go ahead and factor that. x squared is x times x. x is 2 times 4. And if they're both negative, it gives me the negative 6 in the middle. So x minus 2 equals 0, and x minus 4 equals 0. Adding 2 to both sides, we get x equals 2. Adding 4 to both sides, our second answer is 4. The only thing we have to do is go back to make sure our bad values don't cause a problem. And 2 and 4 is not allowed. And 2 and 4 is exactly what we got here. So it turns out both of them are dumped. And there's nothing left. When there's nothing left, we say there is no solution. Or sometimes we'll say D and E for does not exist. Either one of those would work just fine. So as you're solving, sometimes we have to factor denominators to find the least common denominator. Also, be careful of those extraneous solutions, checking what values are not allowed and need to be thrown out. It's your turn to practice some of these. Let your instructor know if you have any questions.